Hi Friends. We have reached the end of August. Thank goodness. Listen, I appreciate summer for some of what it has to offer. The longer days, the sun breaking out around, well now like a little after 6 a.m. The sun not setting until I guess now like 7.45 ish. But since I live in the Northeast, sometimes it can get a little humid. And there were some fantastic days, family. The sun was out, the sky was blue, humidity was down. It was hot, but I was able to handle it. It was comfortable, it was pleasant. You know, days like today where it's, it's mm, I wish I had the fan on, let me just say that. It's not on because of the audio, and then of course I have to close my window because of the automobiles passing by. But let's get into the favorite, shall we? Well, let me first give you a skin sobering update. I stopped using skincare back in July 12th, and it has been over 30 days, and I am planning to film a dedicated video about my skin fasting journey, what I have experienced, observed, uh, maybe some suggestions if you're thinking about getting into this, I, I have a few. My skin has improved. It doesn't look like that because I am a picker. And something I realized is because when I stopped using skincare, my skin's ability to regenerate and all that has now, it is now operating as it should, right? So the cellular turnover I feel is more regular and things like to pop up and they also come out very easily. So I wouldn't have as many, I'm, I'm oiling my cuticles, excuse me. I wouldn't have as many blemishes, I think, if I just left my hands to myself, but all the uh, blemishes I did put on myself, they heal rather quickly. I have to say, they heal quickly. The, the devastating ones, like this one here, you can't really see it, but this is gonna scab like by Friday. I'm filming this on a Tuesday. The dryness is a problem, and although I hate the humidity, it does help. It does help combat the dryness. I am contemplating buying a humidifier for the winter time just to keep this going. And also I do use lye soap to now cleanse my makeup off, which is why I only aim for at most three days a week for makeup so I don't have to use the soap every day and the powder mineral makeup I do use if I do can be cleansed with just water and any leftover the skin will just kind of flake it off right so it's not a huge deal that has been the journey and I'm sticking with it because fam I have reclaimed my time I don't even put on body lotion anymore okay I just get out the shower all right lukewarm I soap up the pit soap up the neck behind the ears you know places where it needs to soap okay the feet all right I rinse and I get out I put on my clothes and that is that. Same thing with my skin. If a day like is today, I'll use the soap. I make sure I get a good lather and I press. I use the suction motion of my hands so that could lift the makeup off my skin, rinse it off. And on other days that I don't wear makeup, I just use water to wash my face evening and morning. It is freeing. I thoroughly enjoy this process. It's been new, it's been interesting, and I understand if you do have a skin condition where not using skincare could be an issue for you, right? This is not to say that you should follow my lead, that you should try this. I am simply sharing what I have gone through. If it was weighing on your mind, if you were curious about it, then I just wanted to provide a little bit of context and perspective, but I love it. I love not using skincare anymore and I don't miss it. I don't miss it. Recently, I posted on my IG the concept of self-care, how that's changed for me. And now my pillars of self-care is lifting, eating well, going on walks, reading more. It has totally shifted where years ago I would have considered skincare, right? The, the ritual of skincare. The regimen I relied on heavily for morning and evening to be a form of self-care. Now I realize that was really a distraction for me. It was something fun for me to do, but it didn't make me grow, right? It didn't contribute to 
the inner workings of my being, of becoming someone better, improving overall. I was just slapping serum on my skin. You know what I mean? I was taking time and and cleansing and yes, like with the jade roller, yes. That was all fluff. It was all fluff. And now that I have invited skin sobering into my life, I have practiced it for over 30 days now, woven into how I completely changed my life with lifting and cooking and now having a a new lens. It just fit well. I guess that's why I was not hesitant in letting go of my skincare. I wasn't sad about it. It was more so, okay, let's try this. And I guess that's why I haven't missed it. And I realized that it wasn't something that contributed to my growth, right? My spiritual growth, my emotional growth. It was just something. And that's cool, right? I'm not saying that you know, you should stop doing skincare to be a better person. Not, please don't take that. (laughs) It's just something to consider. And I wanted to explain that to you because if you were wondering why it was so simple for me to drop it, uh, why I don't want to go back to it, why I don't miss it, that's the reason. 100%. I'm going to continue on with the skin sobering. I do use it sometimes if I am applying makeup, but I don't keep that stuff on. It comes off before bed. And I do apply SPF if in direct contact with the sunlight. When I go out for my runs, I only wear my visor. I don't wear my sun brim hat because I got to put the headphones on and they're the overhead versions. You know, the Sony with the base. So I have to wear my visor. And in those circumstances, I'll slap on the SPF 100%. Usually though, if I'm not running around, I'll just put on my full UPF 50 treated sun rim hat from San Diego, San Diego hat company. They, I mean, I have a bunch. Okay. I just put that on, call it a day, right? I'm not making it overcomplicated. So that is my, that's my sun care routine. All right. Washing with water or with the light soap if I have to. And, and my eczema, which originally I had attributed to caffeine being the culprit of it flaring up. I do feel caffeine plays a role, but after reading Skin Sobering and understanding that skincare or now we're into the body care category of things, it could exacerbate symptoms of eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis. Now that I haven't applied lotion on my skin, I mean, the only thing I would apply is Vaseline on the driest patches on my body. My eczema has become significantly better. I used to have patches here around the perimeters of my armpits. They're gone. And it used to itch too. It came back and I was worried. I was frustrated. I started drinking caffeine again, but the timing wasn't the same as when my eczema was terrible, where I was drinking caffeine first thing in the, well, not first thing in the morning, but it was the first thing I consumed. And then I ate breakfast. Now I wait like two hours before I drink it. At least I eat breakfast first. Then I have my cortado afterwards. So the timing is different. And when I cut it out completely, my eczema became significant better when I started drinking it again it didn't get worse again it just kind of came back I guess intermediate level but now ever since just rinsing with water and using Lysol where I need it hasn't come back here also I used to get like a patch here this was itching a lot and it was getting me worried the worst patches that I have now are in front of my shins sometimes they could get a little angry at me I think it's mostly due to the environment if it's hot and humid in a room and Bay's apartment ugh, is the worst because it absorbs so much heat and retains it so I got the fan on and that poor AC my gosh I mean it does some <laughs> but it doesn't do a whole lot. So sometimes when my skin is hot, my it starts to itch, right? Just eliminating body care, I think also positively contributed to the healing of my eczema. 
we'll keep you updated on that. Since we were on the pits, I had mentioned that the Crystal Salt Stick deodorant has been working for me. Something I wanted to quickly mention about this though, let me know down below if you are a wearer of Crystal deodorant if you undergo this. The role of this Crystal Stick is not to stop sweating, is to eliminate the odor. I was primarily applying it here in the pit region where you would think. I discovered, however, that I, I had to take it out. I had to expand. We had to take it not only here, but here. So I roll this sucker all the way up. Make sure you either wet your pits first or you wet the stick. I roll her all the way up and I take her not just here. We're going outside, down, behind, up, and in a couple of times. I found when I apply it all over in that manner, it's far more effective in combating the smell. When I just keep the application here, it can be a little dicey. You know, since it is summertime, I am sweating a lot more. Perhaps this will change in fall, winter, but I did find when applying it in this <laughs> larger fashion that the salt stick has or can do a better job of combating any odor because I'm I'm not just sweating here I'm sweating everywhere right and I don't want the bacteria or whatever that's accumulating in this space when my pits are closed to move here if it does because naturally it's sweat I want to be ready you know I want this area to be treated in a way that whatever smelly sweat decides to migrate is gonna be taken care of. So let me know down below if that is something you rely on too. Maybe there's another brand I have to try. Some of you have suggested Lume, but my mom was so pissed. She tried Lume and she's like, I have never smelled my armpits until I use that. So she stopped using it. That's not to say it's not gonna work for me, right? But. I decided to just stick with the salt stick because it has been working. It has, it's been working better when I discovered uh, a different way of applying it. But I would love to know down below if you underwent the same thing, how you apply the salt stick, you know what I'm saying? With all the updates out the way, it is time to go into the favorites and <laughs> Hello. I recently purchased the Hollow Taco Down to Earth Fall Bundle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven polishes, seven polishes, six creams, and one flaky taco. Look how beautiful this is. And for this manicure, I put the Fallen Flaky Taco on top of Brick Red and Nightshade. I, mm, I have a Starly Matte Taco. My Hollow Taco Matte Taco dried the F out, so can't really use her anymore. But I would love to experiment in having a matte finish on the Flaky Taco because I think it is extraordinary. And the creams, my goodness. These shades, I knew I was done. As soon as I saw the sneak beaks, I was like, I'm finished, finished. First of all, I don't wear a lot of red, but this brick red is extraordinary and pressed, or excuse me, not pressed, this olive green that apparently not a lot of people like, but it is gorgeous. Let me pop up a photo quickly where <laughs> when I first did my nails, I had to apply all the colors at once because I just needed to see the Skittle effect. And on the other hand, I think I did Skittles, but with the Fallen Taco on top, so much fun. Nightshade is what I have on this hand. Beautiful, like muted purple. It's gorgeous. I just adore the shade. Modest Moss is a mood. Look how beautiful this green is. It is absolutely perfect. And then we have Low Key Blushing. Gorgeous pink and stay grounded. Look at, look at this brown. It's like a yellow, tawny type of, but the, extraordinary and i also ordered moon cats midnight rodeo i think that's what it's called couldn't stay away i could have just purchased maybe like five out of the ten no i just got the whole thing got the whole thing when i saw sand viper that shade gripped me mercilessly had to have it and there is a matte flaky top coat in that collection, which I think is so clever. Go Michelle. Michelle is a co-owner of Mooncat and she had explained on one of her IG reels where she was taking a chance in releasing this collection because there's a lot of earth tones and apparently a lot of people like earth tones. What's wrong with them? 
help. I subscribe to those tones. I cannot wait to get them on my nails. I ordered the collection like two weeks ago or something like that. Have not received a delivery notification yet. I really hope it does come soon. Cause I, I just need, I need to slap them polishes on my nails now. But it's all good down to earth is holding me down <laughs> in the meantime i might paint something different next week maybe i'll do this combination the stay grounded and the low-key blush and i think these are gorgeous together or even just the two greens that's a lot of fun i showed this blush in my live that if you would like to become a member of my close friends channel you could i'll include the link down below in the description box where i purchased the freaking chanel equinox fall winter blush i have it on today and i made sure to use like a hardy brush with this from sonia's fundamental face set this is her soft buffer perfect for picking up a blush that needs a little more punch in terms of the color payoff and on my live video i mentioned when buying the coral shade i had wanted to buy the mauve rose shade too but it was sold out I was sad about it, but one of you had kindly mentioned to me on my EG messages that Macy's had it, so I ordered it. I know, do I need both? Absolutely not, but I just adore these shades, especially the coral. At the time of uploading this video, I think I would have already uploaded my top five blushes video. I was blabbering about not enjoying corals or peaches during fall winter, and this is so corally terracotta-ish, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it's fine. I take it back. What was I saying? I think I was speaking about Bellini at the time, and yes, Bellini, and which is a, a vibrant peachy shade, I do feel runs a little more spring-summer for me. It depends on the undertone of the coral blush and the Chanel one, I think nails it in terms of autumn vibes, especially if you pair it with a similar colored eye. But the shading is just gorgeous. It's lightweight. You could build the color up, you know, it's it has like a an earthiness to it, but the coralness is not too pink. It is a little peachy on me, but it's like a muted earthy peach, kind of like what sandy cheeks would be in a powder form <gasps> that that i just sold myself the blush and i already bought it so there you go if you're a wondering fam what that could give you it's definitely you know in that realm like a burnt more burnt peach which i do feel can be appropriate for fall winter you know what i'm saying and now that i have ordered mauve rose that will be here tomorrow but i will be at base the timing, I know. Would love to compare it to Gucci's Warm Berry because I do feel those shades are similar, but the mauve rose might run a little cooler, so we'll discover that together. Okay, stay tuned for that video. And I did buy the loose powder. Let me get her. Where is it? I'll put up a clip of when I applied this during the live. It is pretty, but it's a pain to apply because you have this spongy nub that you have to tap off even when you tap off, when applying it, there will be fallout just because it's the nature of the product. You gotta make sure you pick up the product around the rim. You don't want that to go to waste, you know what I mean? The actual texture of this loose powder shadow is quite lovely. It, it leaves behind more of a satin sheen finish on the eyes, very soft. And I did purchase uh, Bois de Aramante, I believe. It's like the Plummy 412. One of the shades, which I know, depending on your skin tone, if you're lighter than me, it could make you look bruised up. But if you're around my skin tone, medium, medium tan, it could be a lovely plum haze, which is what I was going for. And I, you know, when I get it on my eyes, it's incredible. Is it worth <laughs> Is it worth getting more? Absolutely not. I just got the one shade, the plum, because I do think it's gorgeous. I'm gonna keep it at that. I bought the other blush because that's a little more practical, all right, in application and everything else. I like it, I do. There's a learning curve. A high one. Food A Beauty was kind enough to send me their Tao House brushes, and I do have a dedicated video going through each and every one of them. I've been using the heck out of this one here. Where is it? The 
P03. This is, I believe, a gray squirrel blend. Use it to set my concealer and just kind of dust around the smaller regions of my face. Also excellent for my powder highlighter. And the P20 I use for mineral makeup application here under the eyes. And it's such a great brush just to buff smaller spaces on your face because of the flat top. But the bristle length lends fantastic movement here, right? So if you wanted to apply more coverage on smaller regions of your face, you could. And the other brush here, the P04, it is marketed to be a highlighter brush, but I adore this for eyeshadow because it's so wide and you can apply shadow fairly quickly. And lastly, the P02, this is the, I believe it's a pine squirrel cheek brush. It's a little rougher on the edges, but nice to paint on foundation if you like, or to apply some blush, but you know, for blush and stuff like that, Sonia's face fundamentals. The fundamental face set, which I am dying to know, to discover what she includes in her fundamental eye set. I really hope she releases it before the end of the year. I need to be complete. But again, fantastic choices in that collection for blush application, as you saw from the soft buffer. And speaking, hold on. Way right there. BK Beauty was so kind to send me their stand up and travel makeup bag. It is currently sold out. My goodness. I think this is clever. So here you have it folded. You could pull it up. The zipper is here. And inside you have the brush holders. And actually, I placed, can't see it. Let me pull this down. I have my brush towel on the center here. And you could pull it up and it gives enough space so that the bristles won't get crushed, right? So I think this is a clever design. I love the color. I love the BK Beauty logo color or brand color rather. And I think it fairly easy to use. I have a few brushes in here, mostly like my Sona G brushes. I, I know, I'm sorry, I don't have a BK brush. I would have the 109, where's my 109? Let me put it in here. There she goes, right there, right there. So. So I think this is fairly practical, but it's funny. I think you could use this for a lot. Like if you get creative, if you're into stationery, for, <laughs> you could put your pens in here if you like and just have it all ready for you to go. Practicing, if you're practicing brush calligraphy, you got your Tombow <laughs> pens in here. I think this will be tall enough for Tombow. Let me see. Let's see here. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, all the pens and the notepads, whatever you like. So again, thank you to Lisa J and BK Beauty for the gift. Hopefully it will get back in stock soon. And let's get into the eyeshadow. What do I have in my eyes? Can you guess? We have Mother's Sunlit Seduction. Sunlit Seduction was an interesting release because <laughs> people initially were disappointed since it was more pinks and learning what Michelle had to say about nail polish and earth colors not doing well. I surmise that is that the reason why Midnight Sun didn't do well? I mean, it was the first mothership I believe to end up in a TJ Maxx on sale. And that palette contains a lot of earth tones and that made sense. Where now the brand is leaning heavily into the pink shades because I guess this is what people are more comfortable with, what they like to apply on the eyes. As much as I love Sunlit Seduction, I don't think it's mother's strongest palette. I consider this mothership to be more like a Lux quad but expanded right the Lux quads that come with the four shadows these now we just have the 10 and this shade here another observation that some of you had made that usually the blitz shades are baked and blitz crimson ecstasy it's not baked I don't actually know what it is the, this formula although impressive as a swatch terrible on the application. I'm not going to swatch it because this is actually a gift from one of my subscribers. Thank you again. This was sent to me a few years ago. It's the Selfridges edition where you have the gold lining around Midnight Sun. Look how beautiful she looks. I know. This is the Blitz shade, but it's baked. You could see from how it's in the pan, right? So that was Mothership 6. Mothership 7, Divine Rose 1. You have Although this is called, I believe, VR something, it's still baked. 
you could probably see how it is in the pan. Divine Rose 2, one of my personal favorites, even though this shade is baked, VR Sex Terrestrial, this is baked, and I think this is the last time we will see a shade like this. Not only VR Sex Terrestrial, but Gold Lust. This is also a baked shade. I think Bronze Rose Zero, these are all baked actually. These are all baked. Extraordinary, right? So mm, when we go into, that was Mothership, Utopian Dream was afterwards, right? With Utopian Dream, that was it. That was the end because this shade here, Blitz Sex Dream, although it says Blitz, this is not a baked shade. This is more of like a, a molten metallic, which actually quite beautiful, right? It goes on lovely, not only as a swash, but also on the eyes. And then you have your astral shades here that are the topper moments of the palette, right? We love those moments, okay? Beautiful. And you have the 005 shade. A little flaky, but I would just use my artistry wand. That's not a problem. That will look a lot smoother when you use it with the artistry wand. And then with Moolit Seduction, again, that palette does not contain a bake shade. The VR Sextasy shade, much like what we see here, is like a molted, melted metallic kind of a gig. And with Solid Seduction, Blitz, this is like, I don't even know. I don't even know. You see how it separates? You gotta really work this in. I think this will be a, a far better if you applied it on top of the artistry wand, personally. And then you have the other uh, astral shades here that don't have the same ability to transform because in the original trilogy, you can tap those on any shade included in the palette to kind of shift it more blue, pink, or gold, however. With these, these just kind of serve as their own shade. They're shiny and they're drier, right? So that is the compromise. But if you apply it, you get great shine. And I tried to kind of emulate that, so I apply the Astral Lilac shade. What is it called? Astral, no. The Astral Amethyst Allure, I applied it on the border of Extreme Vermilion Dusk and Hypnotic Bronze. I thought that was a nice gradient effect. And then I pulled in a little bit of, let me see, pink, Astral Pink Fetish. I applied that on the inner corner and pulled it over the arc so you have like really nice sparkle there on the inner region of the eye. Pulled in a little bit of Astral Gilded Aura on the lower inner corner. And then I applied the Blitz Crimson shade here under my lash line because I'm like, I gotta put it somewhere, you know? But the look is beautiful. 100%, I think you just gotta finagle it. It's not an ugly palette, for sure. I just think that there there is a clear, even with the packaging, you see how this is like shiny gold and the older palettes were like a more muted, like a brushed gold, is an, is an interesting change. All that to say, I'm not sure if the brand is undergoing resourcing issues, uh, if they can't get the same quality, and keep the price the same. I know there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. My friend works for a high fashion brand. The stuff she tells me that goes on, unknown to the consumer, it just reveals a lot, right? And I also listened to a gentleman that I'll make sure to post his video down below about how luxury is degrading a little bit, right? That if anyone wants to buy a luxury bag, let's say a Chanel bag, they're encouraged now to get a vintage one, Louis Vuitton as well, because the materials and the craftsmanship that were relied on years ago far surpass what's happening now, right? I mean, they could slap on made in France, in France, but the bag was made not in France, but because the tag said, or they put the tag on in France, it's okay for them to say that. And the, the types of materials that are being used are not great anymore. Like the entire process through which these clothes, bags, and shoes go through is just not as. I'm not sure if that same change is occurring now in Lux makeup. I'm not sure if the ingredients that are usually sourced and used for luxury makeup hard to come by now, 
cost cut like there's a lot that's going on and i'm just speculating because i think it's an interesting point of conversation and also something to consider right i think there's more to it than just oh she's getting cheap like yes that's what it might look like from the outside but in terms of what's really going on i have no idea right we can only speculate based on the products that we receive and could only hope right we could only hope that there will be a shift and i don't know like i would love to have an astral quad for the holidays but given that we haven't seen a big shade from mother since divine rose 2 I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm going to stay optimistic. And the last palette, Natasha Denona's I Need a Nude. A lot of conversations surrounding this palette as well. I had uploaded a comparison video where I apply the shadows from this palette and compare them to Glam, Star, and My Dream. And I think we all came to the conclusion that this is really catered to light to medium skin tones, medium tan maybe, because there's only the silhouette shade. And I think my original conclusion was because the shade didn't have enough medium tones, it was hard to diversify the looks, but I think it's more so they don't have enough deep tones, right? If they had included, even if it's not a matte, a deeper tone of the uh, fun la la shades here, the wet effect or the foiled metallic, whatever it was called, maybe we could have a little more wiggle room to create uh, looks that were a little more diverse on our eyes. Now, not taking away from the fact that this is a gorgeous palette, right? I think the I Need a Nude concept was interesting, especially when it first released with her lipsticks, I think back in 2019 or 2018, and there were a lot of nudes, I thought that catered to several skin tones, but we needed a little more, a little more of that in the eyeshadow palette. Regardless, however, totally fine, We'll see what she comes out with next. I'm fine with it. Be I know I'm speaking for my own skin tone. My apologies. Because she came out with Yucca, I, I feel like I can forgive. I need a nude for being a little more simple. And also, I have a bunch of Natasha Denona shadows where if I needed to swap out a shade or two, I can. It would be interesting to see if she did a I need a nude dark like she did with the glam face palette she did a dark and a light probably not because she just stuck with this one you know I don't know if we'll see another version of the I need a nude concept from her neutral palettes I think Biba still reigns supreme because it's just more diverse you got the musters in there the rosy browns and you have the black the grays uh the more like medium brown shades and although you only have three metallics in that palette I think the number of mattes in there and the different tones deliver more looks overall and perhaps we'll have an I Need a Nude mini for the holiday where if Natasha included one of those wet effect shadows in there that, you know, you could buy the mini and then pair it with your other Natasha Denona palettes to get that wet effect and not have to dedicate everything into one of these minis, right? I would love another Metropolis moment. I'm saying it right now. We need another 28 pan mini, okay? Maybe in the I Need a Nude concept. That's a lot of shades for I Need a Nude. 28 star she could do star or just a, a different concept altogether right cosmos like ilnp did for their nail polish collection which bay is buying for me i asked him to we'll see we'll keep our eyes open but that's about it august was a cool month i think it had really nice moments where I wanted to practice discernment in my shopping. I waited for the Chanel, bl the Chanel blushes released like a few months back, maybe. I waited, I didn't want to run to them right away. And when I tried them in store, or I already knew I wanted them, I just didn't want to buy them like impulsively, but we still got them. Nail polish was the, the damage for August, 100%. Hollow Taco Collection, the Mooncat Collection, <laughs> Selling It Seduction, I think it's still beautiful. Probably will not be in my top five Pat McGrath palette list. And I think by now the Moonlit Seduction six look video would have already been uploaded. So 
you know, clearly you can see where I'm steering in terms of favorites, but those are my thoughts on August. I think overall I've enjoyed the month and we'll see what September brings. I'm excited, not only for the season, but for the weather changes. I know the days are gonna get shorter, I know. Will survive. Use Christmas lights in your room so you can still maintain some productivity when the day is not light outside, but mentally you could go on a little bit before bed, but it's not super bright and it won't interfere with your melatonin levels at night. But we'll talk about that more when the month comes. Let me know what your favorites have been for August and I will see you down in those comments. Until then fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, monthly favorites, or a new eyeshadow palette. Who knows at this point? Take care and I will see you again soon.